Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record the output of a track in Reaper. I have a track in front of me here, and it's a guitar solo with volume automation that I wrote, and there's a bunch of plugins on it. If we hear it back without those plugins in bypass, it sounds like this. A little boring. If I turn it back on, we can see I added an EQ to cut some low end and boost some upper mids, added a delay, and then some reverb. And now it sounds like this. It sounds a bit better, but to preserve that and save some DSP, I want to print this to another track. And there's a few different ways of doing that. One of the ways is to select the track, right click it, go down here to render, and choose to render all of this to a new track. I'm going to choose stereo because the reverb is stereo. It renders that track right up here and mutes the original. And it'll sound exactly the same. Although it didn't print the automation, the automation is still right here and it's still going to play back. If you want to print that automation with it, we could do it a different way. Let's undo that. We could first create a folder and render that. So let's make a new track. Let's put it on top of this one, make it a folder. Now we can render this track. Right click it, go to render, render tracks to stereo stem tracks. Now I'll do the same thing, but it printed the automation. And notice at the end, the file is longer to accommodate for the delay and reverb. Another way we could do this, let's undo that, is to freeze the track. We could select it, right click it, go down here, and choose to freeze tracks to stereo. It freezes the effect on the track, it doesn't print the automation, but it prints those effects. See, there's no effects on here. It's empty. So all the effects are frozen on this track. But the benefit of this is we could undo it at any point. Just right click it, choose to unfreeze right here, and it unfreezes those effects. The effects are back. But with freezing the track, as with rendering, it doesn't print the volume automation. So let's undo that. But the main thing I want to show you in this video is how to record the output of the track. So let's create a new track down here by double clicking. Let's put it up above it. Now I want to record this track to this track. Now we can create a send by grabbing from here in the routing and just dropping it on top of this track. Now this audio is being sent to here, including the volume automation and all the effects. But there's one problem with that. It doesn't enter this track on the input. So if I go into record on this track, even though we're gonna hear the guitar solo on this track, it's not gonna print it. Check it out. It's gonna record this microphone, what I'm saying right here. But if we want to record the output of this track to this track, we have to change one thing. Let's undo that. If we go up here, see where it says input? That's what this track is going to record, the input. But we can change it by clicking it and choosing record output instead. Let's choose output stereo. And now if we go into recording this track, it's going to record this, along with the effects and the volume automation. But we should change one other thing. If you notice, the meter is still moving. Let's go to the input and change it to none. So now it's just going to record the output, which is what this track is sending to it. 
So now if I go into record, watch what happens. It recorded the solo. And if we mute this to play it back, it'll sound the same. So now we can record the output of this track to this track. And where this is really helpful is for printing all these effects, the EQ, delay, and reverb, but also recording the automation or any envelopes on this track. But it's also really helpful for punching in different sections as you're working on them. So if we go over here to Options on the new recording and change the recording mode to Trim's existing items behind new recording, which is tape mode, we could punch in without creating takes and record the output of this track as we work on it. So if we want to punch, say right here, just go into record. And we could work through our song piece by piece, printing the output of this track. And you can record the delay and the reverb that hangs over. We can go as long as we want. And if you're working with a very long project, like a movie in post, you can work section by section, constantly printing as we go, from this track to this track. And it's also useful for combining tracks. Let's say you're dealing with multiple tracks and they're all bust together. Maybe background vocals or multiple guitars. You could process them exactly how you want. Then just go to that section and print the output of those tracks. Or just to organize it a bit clearer. So that's pretty much it. That's how you record the output of a track in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!